New York's number one news. Channel 7 Eyewitness News. And AccuWeather alert in effect. Severe heat and humidity headed our way and hanging around for a few days. We're in for another heat wave. But first. So when I look back, I'm kind of proud of what we've done. Thank you very much for these great years together. God bless you all. He was an entertainer, an icon, and a true New Yorker. Tonight, we are remembering our friend and colleague, Regis Philbin, following his death at the age of 88. Good evening, everyone. I'm Sandra Bookman. Joe Torres has the night off. Simply put, he was a legend with his spontaneous wit, his endearing charm. We have been welcoming Regis Philbin into our homes for nearly six decades. He was the most watched person in television history. And we here at Channel 7 can also tell you he was the nicest. Regis died late last night, and his longtime co-host Kathy Lee Gifford wrote, there will never be another. Sandy Kenyon begins our coverage tonight with a look back at this one-of-a-kind talent. I've got a show to do. Whether it was a talk show, a game show, or just a chance to show off his trademark wit, Regis Philbin was a fixture on televisions across America. Reach. Yes? Your lips are chapped. <laughs> That's right, Frank. Take the tight close-up. All was unscripted. Regis probably couldn't have written a better life story for himself. Born in Manhattan, Regis Francis Xavier Philbin was named after the high school his father attended. He grew up in the Bronx, and after earning a sociology degree at Notre Dame, Regis served in the Navy where he got some sage advice from a Marine major. Oh, on my last day, told me, you got to go for it. You can have anything you want in this life. You just got to want it. Now, do you want it, Philbin? And I got, you know, absolutely. I, and I got in the car and I went up to Hollywood. And that's how the It's a long story. <laughs> Regis eventually burst onto the national stage as the sidekick on The Joey Bishop Show. The hottest thing on records, Regis Philbin. Yeah! <laughs> By the 1980s, he was back in New York, hosting his own talk show. He had various co-hosts from Sarah Purcell to Mary Hart to... It's live with Regis and Kathy Lee. Regis and Kathy Lee were television gold. Who are your hemorrhoids? Are you all right? I remember I was going through something at the time, and all of a sudden, Regis would knock on my door and say, You ready, co-host? You ready? Let's do it. And he'd walk me out, hold my hand and walk me out. Didn't have to do it, but that's what friends do for one another. Today, Kathy Lee wrote, we spent 15 years together bantering and bickering and laughing ourselves silly, a tradition and a friendship we shared up to this very day. I smile knowing somewhere in heaven at this very moment, he's making someone laugh. After Kathy Lee left the show, it's live with Regis and Kelly. In 2001, Kelly Ripa took over the stool beside Regis, and their chemistry was undeniable. We have we're, a we're malfunction a here. We're wardrobe malfunction. Yeah. And, and it's fun. I've been, I'm enjoying it. Kelly and her current co-host Ryan Seacrest today writing, he was the ultimate class act, bringing his laughter and joy into our homes every day on live for more than 23 years. We were beyond lucky to have him as a mentor in our careers and aspire every day to fill his shoes on the show. Regis wasn't just a fixture on morning television. He proved he could charm primetime audiences as well, hosting the hit game show Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Let's play millionaire right now. As for late night, he was a frequent guest on the David Letterman show, even filling in for him when he underwent bypass surgery. You start from number 10 and work down to one, What right? do you think, Einstein? <laughs> Excuse me, the guy calls this morning, Reed. <laughs> please come. Help. It'll be co-host. It'll be something new. Please, please, Regis. So, how did the man who logged more hours on television than anyone else want to be remembered? I guess, number one, a nice guy who uh, did his best to uh, give you a few laughs and make you feel uh, welcome to his show. A lot of guys really, I get the feeling, don't care whether you like that show or not, you know. Uh, I want people to enjoy what I do. And, and understand what I'm doing is for their enjoyment. And uh, that's all I can ask for. Those of us who have been here a while knew him as a colleague and a friend. What you saw on air was the same person we got in the hall, except he was even funnier one-on-one. -on -one. 
The man I knew was what some in his generation call a hail fellow well met. And my life is much richer for having met Regis Philbin. I'm Sadie Kenyon, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Tributes are pouring in tonight for one of the great television talents of our time. President Trump called Regis a fantastic person and a friend. Larry King said he was a prolific talent. And Tony Bennett said he always made him laugh. Not bad for a kid from the Bronx who never forgot where he came from. Eyewitness News reporter Naveen Daliwal is live outside our studios with that part of our coverage. Naveen. Yeah, Sandra Regis Philbin lived here on the Upper West Side. He worked here, going in and out of these doors at WABC for nearly three decades. And today, his fans, his colleagues, remembering the great man he was on and off screen. Regis Philbin! He had a personality larger than life on the TV screen, but Regis Philbin had a bigger heart when the world wasn't watching. Phenomenal guy, extremely gracious and extremely generous. Philbin, raised in the Bronx on Kroger Avenue, now known as Regis Philbin Avenue, in his honor, was a graduate of Cardinal Hayes High School. I spent, you know, three years here at this school, and, um, and I remember those um, auditorium meetings very well. <laughs> Never forget them. Part of my life, and here I am again. A decade ago, that auditorium renamed after him. He uh, was very generous in refurbishing the uh, auditorium. As a word of Philbin's death spread. He was like such an iconic person um, in the media, and yeah, he'll be missed. He was very friendly, and he was open to uh, different ideas, different people coming, you know. So I think he was uh, uh, an every man. His colleagues taking to Twitter to remember his dedication to hard work over nearly three decades in showbiz. Executive chairman of the Walt Disney Company, Bob Iger, saying this, Regis graced us with warmth, humor, and a self-deprecating wit, always bringing happiness to us all. Our hearts go out to joy and to his family. And late night talk show host Jimmy Kimmel tweeting, Regis was a great broadcaster, a good friend, and a tremendous amount of fun. He leaves behind a beautiful family and a TV legacy that will likely go unmatched. No doubt, as many remember an icon, a legend, a friend. Just like a passage of time, a chapter in the life of the media, well, he certainly leaves a legacy behind him. And a very big one. And Regis was known to walk the streets here on the Upper West Side, saying hello to his fans. And I spoke to some of them today, and they say they will no doubt miss his smiling face. We're live on the Upper West Side tonight. Naveen Dhaliwal, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Naveen, thank you very much. And yes, we all ran into him on the streets around here and in the hallways, and he always made you laugh. Uh, the team at Live released a statement that reads in part, our hearts are broken to learn the news about Regis's passing. Uh, Regis originated live as a local New York broadcast back in 1983, and for more than 27 years, he poured his heart and soul into the show. Many of the members of our staff began their careers at live with Regis and were lucky enough to learn from a master broadcaster. And there will be a special tribute to Regis on live this Monday morning at 9. And we invite you to stay with Eyewitness News as we remember the life and legacy of our dear colleague, Regis Philbin. In our next half hour, Sandy will return with a look back at Regis's final live show. And we've posted a slideshow of photos and a timeline of Regis's incredible career at ABC 7 and Y and on our free news app. Now we turn now to the weather. We're just hours away from the beginning of another heat wave and maybe even a record for dangerous heat on Monday. Meanwhile, tonight on Manhattan's Upper West Side, folks were out and about enjoying a nice dinner in the warm summer Saturday evening. Meteorologist Jeff Smith joins us now with a first look at the exclusive AccuWeather forecast. Yeah, here we go on the precipice of heat wave number two of 2020 in New York City. We have that heat advisory in effect for the five boroughs out onto western Long Island, also urban areas of North northeastern New Jersey right through 8 p.m. on Monday. Wouldn't be surprised if that gets extended to Tuesday as well. 
81 degrees even at this hour in the park and the humidity has come up during the past couple of hours now in the oppressive category dew points right around the 70 degree mark and humidity will stay at that elevated level right into the early part of the week excessive heat will be building again starting tomorrow temperatures getting well up into the middle 90s and it will feel like over 100 degrees for most of the area during the day on Monday. Tuesday right now looks like our transition day. We'll have hot weather uh, first part of the day into midday and then some afternoon storms will be followed by relief for the middle to latter part of the week. In the meantime, overnight tonight, getting down to 74 if we're lucky in New York City and highs tomorrow well up into the middle 90s, feeling like close to 100, especially south of New York City. And then on Monday, feeling like over 100 across the entire area. We'll talk about that. Plus, we'll tell you how much relief we get and your AccuWeather seven-day forecast coming up a little bit later in the half hour. Sandra, back over to you. All right, thank you very much, Jeff. And this quick reminder, you can get an update on the AccuWeather forecast anytime on the go. You can see the live interactive radar, and you will receive severe weather alerts with our free AccuWeather app. New information tonight on a double slashing in the East Village. One of the victims is reportedly the daughter of actor Kelsey Grammer. The sources are telling Eyewitness News that 36-year-old Spencer Grammer and a male companion were attacked at a restaurant last night. This evening, police released this video of the suspected attacker. An eyewitness says that man was intoxicated when he started arguing with restaurant workers. When Grammer and her companion tried to intervene, the suspects slash them both. Their injuries were not life-threatening. New tonight, a woman and three children in critical condition after being pulled from a burning apartment in Brooklyn. Firefighters found them inside an eighth floor unit at the Linden Houses in East New York. Now, this is citizen app video showing that scene after the flames were out. Firefighters had to knock down the door to that home and make their way through intense heat and thick smoke to find the victims. The children are ages 11, 13, and 14. And we continue our look back at all of the memorable moments with our friend and colleague Regis Philbin as we remember his loving heart and his iconic career. And one of the most talked about moments came from the first millionaire winner of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? John, you've got 30 seconds. Starts right now. Uh, hi, Dad. Hi. Uh, I don't really need your help. I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to win the million dollars. <laughs> Because the U.S. president appeared on Laughing is Richard Nixon. That's my final answer. Well, my gosh. What can I say except, Debbie, you're going to Paris, so this is the final answer heard all around the world. He's won a million dollars. Hospital nurses received special parking permits at the peak of the pandemic. My way of getting to and from work to save lives. But months later, 25 tickets, $1,250. They come to seven on your side when they can't pay these fines. Is this how you treat your own? Monday at 5 on Eyewitness News. Air conditioner. Governor Cuomo announced today New York had its lowest number of ICU patients with coronavirus since March. There were at least 646 people hospitalized in the state yesterday. Meanwhile, elsewhere in the country, cases are soaring, prompting health experts across the nation to urge tighter restrictions. 16 states broke records for hospitalizations. ABC's Megan Terizian has the story. Tonight, as the U.S. hits five straight days of over 1,000 COVID-19 deaths, more than 150 medical experts across the country endorsing an open letter to lawmakers, calling for the drastic measure to shut down again and start over. Our objective is to kill this virus. A shelter in place, as difficult as it will be, is the medicine we need to take. This comes as Florida surpasses New York in the number of COVID-19 infections, now second only to California, with the most cases in the U.S., all three states reaching more than 400,000 total cases. In Florida, nearly 50 ICUs have no available beds. Eight-year-old Zane Wappler hospitalized over a week with multi-system inflammatory syndrome caused by COVID. The secondary syndromes that stem from this are horrifying. 
and terrifying as a parent. My husband and I have sat there and I have not left the room um, for eight days. After seeing a jump in infections, New Orleans shutting down bars and banning takeout alcohol. A surge of cases in Ohio prompting a visit from coronavirus task force expert Dr. Deborah Burks. She points to evidence that bars and nightclubs could be the source of the increase in recent cases. It is something about drinking, not wearing a mask, and being close to people, particularly indoors, that is actively spreading this virus. The debate over whether to start classes in the fall rages on as the CDC lays out new guidelines to get students back in the classroom. Alabama rolling out a new plan to test every college student two weeks before starting classes. And in Massachusetts today, Vice President Mike Pence with this message. Governor, like you, we, we simply believe that um, uh, it, it's best for our kids to be back in the classroom. It's best for working families and it's the best for our country. Massachusetts, one of nine states, seen a drop in COVID hospitalizations. Next month, we'll start mandating anyone coming in from states that are hotspots to quarantine for two weeks. Megan Tavrizian, ABC News, San Diego. Brazil's president, Jair Bolsonaro, has now beat the coronavirus, getting a negative result on his latest test. Bolsonaro made that announcement on Twitter and posted a photo of himself holding a box of the controversial drug hydroxychloroquine. The Bolsonaro tested positive for the virus back on July 7th after downplaying its threat. He also tested positive to seek sub subsequent times, including this past Wednesday. And we continue our remembrances of our colleague Regis Philbin. Tonight, this plaque, it was placed outside our studio just after his retirement. It reads, in recognition of your ability to make a smile every morning for 28 years. WABC TV and the Walt Disney Company, thank you for your talent, hard work and dedication to millions of loyal viewers. The plaque was unveiled on live on November 18, 2011, his last day on the show. Closed captioning is sponsored by Raymore and Flanagan. Find it, feel it, furnish it fast. Zeratech. Toyota has 22 vehicles with standard Apple CarPlay. Let's connect. Toyota. Get attractive lease deals on RAV4, the best-selling small SUV in America for the last three years. Toyota. How does the world reopen for business? To return to the workplace safely, companies will need the right tools. That's why Salesforce created Work.com. It's an all-new suite of apps, expertise, and services to manage this crisis today and thrive tomorrow. Everything companies need to return to the workplace. Let's reopen safely. This season, the hottest destination isn't a place, it's a retreat on wheels. Now's your chance to get away in a Ford SUV. The SUVs with the highest brand loyalty in the industry. With scenic views, premium sound, and all your favorite tech, every drive is one exhilarating destination. And with great offers going on now, you've arrived. Get away in the 2020 Ford Escape. Lease one for just $189 a month for 24 months. See more offers at buyfordnow.com. I know what we're gonna do today. Let me show you the infinite possibilities. Are you ready for this? Hold on to your butt. Let's fly! Hang on! By the way, this is a friend of mine. I am Groot! <laughs> oh my God. Zero Tech. Eyewitness News needs your help to protect our children. Have you seen Serenity? ABC7 and Ridgewood Savings Bank thank you for helping protect our children. Six days of tributes to the late Congressman John Lewis began today in Alabama. Lewis is being remembered as a titan in the civil rights movement. At age 23, he was the youngest of the big six civil rights activists who planned the historic march on Washington. In 1965, he led a march across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma. Tomorrow, a military guard will escort his body across that bridge for a final time. 
He became a figure known around the world for action on the Edmund Pettus Bridge, confronting Alabama state troopers. And now Alabama state troopers will lead his body around this state as we celebrate his life. Lewis will live in, lie in state in the U.S. Capitol next week. His funeral is set for Thursday in Atlanta. Lewis was 80 years old. New video as Hurricane Hannah made landfall in Texas. The Category 1 storm slammed into Corpus Christi and Padre Island this evening. The powerful storm system had sustained winds of 90 miles an hour as it brought damaging winds and rain to the southern coast of Texas. Governor Greg Abbott has issued a disaster declaration in 32 counties. Flood warnings remain in effect along coastal communities. Hannah is the first hurricane of the season in the Atlantic. Wow, Jeff, you look at all of that and you think, oh, we got a little old heat wave to deal with, huh? Yeah, we have it pretty good. It's pretty scary, by the way, that we're already on the H storm. It's already a landfalling hurricane. It isn't even August yet, and the hurricane season typically doesn't peak out until early September. So, boy, this is off to a record fast start. We hope it does not continue at this pace. Here's a look outside right now. That temperature, 81 degrees. Humidity up there at 72%. And that humidity is really going to remain elevated for several days, and the heat will join the party in a big way tomorrow. Got up to 88 today. We're expecting mid-90s by tomorrow afternoon. There's that southwest wind coming at about 5 miles per hour, helping to pump in the heat and humidity. 81 at Newark and Teterboro right now. 84 still at LaGuardia Airport. You get up to 90 there. You get up to 90 at Newark today. So those locations actually starting the heat wave a day earlier. Uh, than the rest of the region. 79 right now, Newburgh 78 at Islip, 71 at Monticello, 76 down the shore at Belmar. Not much going on around here cloud-wise, and it's going to be very stable the next few days. Another look at Hannah made landfall again earlier this evening, as Sandra was pointing out. Padre Island, Texas, moving inland right now over southern Texas, north of Brownsville, south of Cor Corpus Christi, uh, creating a lot of heavy rainfall. This will weaken, thankfully, as it heads into the northeastern mountains of Mexico during the next 24 to 48 hours. Lows tonight around here, getting down to about 74 or so in the city. Some upper 60s, if you're lucky, north and west of town. Look at highs tomorrow, pretty much region-wide in the 90s, and we're not talking just barely 90. We're talking 94 degrees in New York City in low to mid 90s down the Jersey Shore. Of course, the temperature doesn't tell the whole story. You add in humidity and what it feels like to the human body when you step outside. That's your heat index value. Uh, by tomorrow afternoon, very similar to the temperature, but I think as the humidity increases even more on Monday, those heat index values will be 100 plus, maybe even close to 105 degrees in parts of the area by Monday afternoon. A lot of people are going to be flocking to the beaches. Southwest wind 10 to 15 during the day tomorrow. Look at water temperatures, 70s to around 80 degrees. Those 80 degree water temperatures found down the Jersey Shore. Humid overnight, patchy clouds. We're down to 74. Could be some patchy fog. A mixture of sun and clouds tomorrow becoming hot and humid. That high getting up to 94, feeling like close to 100 in spots. Clear to partly cloudy tomorrow night. Remaining muggy down to about 76. It's AccuWeather alert material right through Monday and Tuesday with this heat wave. The hottest day Monday, 96 within two degrees of a record for the date. Heavy afternoon thunderstorm on Tuesday and then behind that, less humid, much more refreshing by later on in the week, Thursday, Friday, near normal for a change. Maybe that thunder threat returning by Saturday. Sandra, we'll send it back over to you. Not looking forward to that humidity. No. Thank you very much, Jeff. And tonight we continue our coverage of the passing of our colleague Regis Philbin with a look at one of his last appearances on television. He sat down with Jimmy Kimmel. Justice Kimmel was set to host a special series of Celebrity Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. The king has returned. The return of the king. How are you? How are you? Good to see you. Gosh, you look fantastic. So do you. How are you doing? I wish I had that. Yeah, I could put one on you. Oh, I bet you can. <laughs> Shall we take a look at the set? Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> well, Regis oh, Philbin. Look at this. This is it. They did it very well. They did a nice job. Nice with job, it. yeah. It would make for a beautiful living room, I think, for, <laughs> <laughs> for someone. Regis, no one will ever be better at doing this than you. No one, never. Didn't seem too sure about that one, but you nailed it. Now that's funny, come on. <laughs> and I'm not just being false, humble by saying that. It's true. Really? You're, you're the best. And that's why people love this show. I mean, it's a great game, but Regis is the reason.
I'm Bill Ritter. Progressive Jamal Bowman on his defeat of veteran Congressman Elliot Engel and retiring Congressman Peter King plus his former colleague Charlie Rangel together up close Sunday morning at 11. A 17-year-old was shot in the head and killed just hours after a, a man was shot in the face and died in the same neighborhood. That teenager has been identified as Shaheem Quinn. He was shot around 10 last night outside the Weeksville Garden Houses in Crown Heights. Now, earlier in the evening, someone shot 39-year-old Ansel Blackman in front of a church about a mile away. Now, police don't believe the murders are connected. So far, no arrest in either case. The family of murdered one-year-old Devel Gardner is calling for an end to gun violence around the city. They joined the Reverend Al Sharpton today at the National Action Network's headquarters. Devel was shot in the stomach while at a barbecue in Bed-Stuy, the family celebrating his mother's new home. Police are still trying to identify the gunman. I just see my baby, 4th of July, mm. Mm. took him to the park, had a little cookout. Sharpton will deliver the eulogy at DeVal's funeral on Monday. Athletes and activism. Coming up on Eyewitness News, how sports is taking a turn toward justice as professional seasons finally tip off. 93 warmer days. Promising new adventure. And views that never get old. Your favorite season starts now. Summer on. Receive a credit of up to $3,000 plus 0.9% financing now through July 31st. Thanks to Spectrum, our home is our family hub. With Spectrum's fast, reliable internet, my hubby can get his work done from home. Just have a good day. Nothing beats work from home Fridays with super fast internet. And my baby girl can live stream her fashion design tips to her 2 million followers. And now you snip it here. Voila. Our Spectrum home keeps us connected to the possibilities. Get 200 megabit Spectrum internet with faster speeds more consistently according to the FCC. Just $44.99 a month when bundled and a free modem. Call 1-833-276-4499. With Spectrum TV, we can binge our favorite shows with free on demand. <laughs> and with the Spectrum TV app, we can hang outside and stream live sports. Get Spectrum TV, just $44.99 a month when bundled. And Spectrum has no contracts. They even bought out our old contract for $500. We even installed it ourselves. The savings are real. So glad we switched. Get Spectrum Internet and TV, just $44.99 a month each when bundled. Call 1-833-276-4499. When it comes to buying a home, they say cash is king. But you're a queen, and that's just as powerful. You're armed with a verified approval from Rocket Mortgage. Sellers know your offer is good, so your bid has the strength to compete with cash offers. Now grab your crown and rule. That castle is yours. So when you need an edge in the bidding war, Rocket can. Anthony Johnson in tonight for Sam Ryan. And Anthony, it's actually looking like uh, almost normal. Yeah, sports? sports is back. Definitely, Sandra. This game had it all. New rules, a pitcher's duel, dogs, and unfortunately for the Mets, an all-too-familiar scene. To City Field, Mets and Braves in game two of that shortened season. Second inning, Atlantis, Adam Duvall, takes Steven Matz deep to right and hits Jeff McNeil's dog. Well, it was the cardboard cutout of Jeff's dog, a rough day for him. That was all the scoring until the fifth when Ahmed Rosario did this. He triples to right center field and brings in Michael Conforto. Rosario would score on a sack fly to give the Mets a 2-1 lead. That was a score in the ninth when Edwin Diaz came on for the save and oh no, here it is again, gives up the game-tying homer to Marcel. Marcelo Zuna with the Braves down to their final strike. The game went to extras where we saw the bizarre new rule where each half inning starts with the player on second and the Braves took advantage. Dansby Swanson singles in the go-ahead run. 5-3. Mets lose a heartbreaker. Not concerned. Uh, you know, it's one one outing. We like how he has been throwing the ball, what he's shown. Him and I spoke a little bit in the dugout after that ninth inning and... Um, you know, he was he was calm. He wasn't anxious or anything. So it's it's definitely something that we can look at and, and keep working from there. 
All right, the Yankees caught a break this afternoon when the Nationals scratched Steven Strasburg, so the Bombers got to avoid the World Series MVP. Rough start for James Paxton, though. Early going, Victor Robles doubles in two runs off Big Maple. Paxton didn't make it out of the second inning. Bombers start chipping away in the fourth. Giancarlo Stanton cracks an absolute monster of a home run. It goes 483 feet to left, his second in the first two games of the season. But in the bottom half, it's Robles again. Hooks a two-run homer off the foul pole and left. Nats ported it on from there. Yankees fall 9-2 in D.C. Jamal Adams finally forced the Jets' hand. The all-pro safety has now been traded to the Seattle Seahawks. Adams originally wanted a new contract, but it became clear he wasn't going to get it. He requested a trade. Then, just to move things along, he made headaches by attacking team owner Woody Johnson and the head coach Adam Gase. The good news for Jets fans, they got a haul in the return for their disgruntled safety. The Seahawks will send back safety Bradley McDougal as well as two first-round picks and a third-round pick. Seems like everyone's happy with the deal, though. After McDougal tweeted his excitement about joining the Jets, Adams replied saying, quote, I wish you nothing but the best amazing city. You'll love it. A two-month search process ends with the result we were all expecting all along. The Knicks are now set to make Tom Thibodeau their next head coach. ESPN is reporting that new team president Leon Rose has offered Tibbs a five-year deal. He takes over a New York team coming off a 21-45 and 45 record last season. Tibbs most recently had two-plus tumultuous seasons with the Timberwolves. He spent five playoff seasons with the Bulls, which included a trip to the Eastern Conference Finals and was with the Knicks under coach Jeff Von Gundy. He went on to win the Coach of the Year Award back in 2011. The Nets played a scrimmage against the Spurs. Big game for Karis Laverde at 27 points. Tyler Johnson, Jared Allen both dropping in seven. Brooklyn looked good in this one. They win 124-119. They tip off the regular season Friday against the Magic. The WNBA tipped off their season today as well, and many team members wearing Black Lives Matter t-shirts. That includes the number one draft pick, that's Sabrina Ionescu, who went 0 for 6, or rather 8 from distance, but she still racked up 12 points, 6 boards, and 4 assists in her pro debut. It comes with a Liberty loss, though, 87-71, that's the final. And finally, we honor our friend and former colleague Regis Philbin. It was no secret he loved sports. He served as honorary pitching coach for the Mets and threw out the first pitch at a Yankees game. He was a die-hard Patriots fan, even though he predicted the Giants would beat them in the Super Bowl. But when it came to football, his heart really belonged to the Fighting Irish. Nothing like it. You know, you work in the heart of New York City with all the hustle and bustle. Yep and all the sirens and everything else, and you come back to Notre Dame, I swear to you, I don't want to get dramatic about this, but it's almost like entering heaven. It is. It really it is. is. No doubt about it. He definitely enters heaven wearing his green, supporting that Notre Dame football team. Thank you very much for everything you did, Regis. And that's it in sports, Sandra. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, he loved the Irish, did he not? In fact, we continue to celebrate that TV legend. Still to come on Eyewitness News, the tributes and personal reflections as we look back on the life and career of Regis Philbin. Every day, nearly 2 million customers across New Jersey rely on PSCNG to provide natural gas. And every day, PSCNG is committed to doing it safely. That includes making sure you know what to do if you smell gas. A natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs. If you suspect a gas leak, leave your home immediately. Get far away, then call 911. Remember, smell, leave, call. Protect the ones you love. Learn more at PSCG.com slash gas safety. Today I made some chocolate chip cookies for Grandma's birthday. Um, what a marvelous family using gig speed to prepare for Grandma's birthday. For real. Those little guys are watching cooking videos while she's live streaming. And Aunt Sue's helping by watching a movie. Classic. She's here. How are they doing all of this without slowing down? It's the gig speed, like I said. You gotta have the fastest internet when your family of influencers. <laughs> Bring every room to life with Optimum's one gig internet on the fastest fiber network. Just $75 a month for life.
This season, the hottest destination isn't a place. It's a retreat on wheels. Now's your chance to get away in a Ford SUV. The SUVs with the highest brand loyalty in the industry. With scenic views, premium sound, and all your favorite tech, every drive is one exhilarating destination. And with great offers going on now, you've arrived. Get away in the 2020 Ford Escape. Lease one for just $189 a month for 24 months. See more offers at buyfordnow.com. New York Presbyterian, Columbia, and Wild Cornell Medicine are here for you now, online and in person. Our leading trusted doctors are why Angela is getting the expert cancer treatment she needs safely, why Hope is getting her scheduled sonogram, and Trevor can get his annual checkup. Don't delay your health needs. Our expert teams who make us a top five hospital in the nation are here for you now. Learn more at nyp.org. As chairman of our family-owned Cambridge Paving Stones, I welcome you all to the annual board meeting. Really? Grandpa. Board meeting! Wait till they learn it's not all fun and games. Because we make Cambridge Paving Stones the hard way with Armatech, our unique process that produces a rich color that looks beautiful for years to come. I'm the chairman of the board! Paving Stones with Armatech. Virtual naturalization ceremonies. The info Sunday morning at 1130. It has been a night filled with memories of our friend and colleague Regis Philbin, who died at the age of 88 last night. The man who took over his role as co-host after Regis's retirement, Michael Strahan, is just one of many celebrities sharing their grief. Michael tweeted, I'm absolutely heartbroken. Regis was an incredible man who could light up any room. He always made me feel special, no matter if I saw him in the studio or ran into him on the street. Legend and icon aren't strong enough words to describe it. He will never be forgotten. Eyewitness News Entertainment reporter Sandy Kenyon continues our coverage. Life came around full circle the day Regis Philbin said goodbye in 2011. His Please former co-host Kathy, Kathy Lee Gifford, Gifford was there more than a quarter of a century after their local show on this station became a national sensation. I cry this time <laughs> just walking out. Uh, well, welcome home again. Given his long run, it's easy to forget Regis wasn't really that famous when they started, although he had been in show business for many decades. When I came to New York, and had this what you would call a last chance, that's when it became important for me to make this thing happen. That's just what he did, first with Kathy Lee and then with Kelly Ripa. We're very similar in a lot of ways. We both hate change. We are both intense creatures of habit. We are both ridiculously predictable. His wife Joy, his famous friends and fellow New Yorkers all there to cheer him on. No doubt about it on that particular day. And what struck me was the genuine respect and even love in the room from his fellow stars and heavy hitters. In a competitive business, Regis Philbin was determined to remain nice and keep everyone laughing. I'm Sandy Kenyon, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. He was nice and he kept us all laughing. Stay with Eyewitness News as we remember the life and legacy of our colleague Regis Philbin. We posted a slideshow of photos and a timeline of his career at ABC 7 and Y and on our free news app. Other news this evening, a teenager fighting for his life after he was stabbed following a car accident in Sunset Park. Eyewitness News reporter Diana Rocco has details. That 19-year-old man remains in critical condition with his family at his bedside tonight after coming to his father's aid in a road rage incident. Crime scene units were at the corner of 4th Avenue and 60th Street in Sunset Park, Brooklyn, where they were scouring the block for evidence throughout the day after a 19-year-old was stabbed coming to his father's rescue. It started with a car accident about 2 o'clock this morning. Two parties exchanged information when one accused the other of giving fake documents. That's when a white sedan with as many as four people started giving the victim's father a hard time, and the 19-year-old stepped in. He was then stabbed in the neck and the chest and brought to NYU Langone in critical condition, where he remains. Sad, though. Really looked like he was dying. Living here with kids, it's very scary. And while police continue to look for that white sedan, it does appear they know exactly who they are looking for. In Sunset Park, I'm Diana Rocco, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. 
More and more professional athletes are using their voices to call for social change, especially today as the WNBA tipped off its season. ABC's Anthony Johnson has more. In the wake of George Floyd's death, athletes are turning up the heat, pushing for social justice and racial equality. Brown has to force it up and bounce it in. WNBA athletes looking forward to today's tip-off, also focusing on Breonna Taylor. This weekend, players will wear jerseys with her name. I think our team is taking a huge stand on this. Number one overall pick, Sabrina Ionescu, ready for her rookie season. Excited to just finally be able to play with everything else that's going on with the murders that are happening. And I think that we're given a prime opportunity to use our platforms and as a team, as a league, to stand for what we believe in. Some NBA players worried returning to basketball would be a distraction for calls for change. But many, like LeBron James, are using their platform to amplify the message. It was fortunate that we had the George, the George Floyd video to see it. I mean, is that what we need to see a, a video of Rihanna being killed for people to realize how um, how bad the situation is. In the league's bubble in Orlando, using media availability to talk about Brianna Taylor. The Louisville EMT shot dead in her home by police executing a no-knock warrant. And months later, none of the officers involved have been arrested or charged. And it's not just basketball. Four years after Colin Kaepernick drew massive criticism for kneeling during the national anthem, on opening day, MLB players took a knee during the anthem while wearing shirts that read Black Lives Matter. Anthony Johnson, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. New precautions for dining out safely ahead on Eyewitness News as restaurants open up, specialists are speaking out. Also to come, a longtime beloved cafe in Manhattan becomes the latest restaurant to close its doors because of the coronavirus pandemic. And taking a live look outside now, meteorologist Jeff Smith returns with your exclusive AccuWeather forecast. Stay with us. Happening tomorrow, the end of the road for a long-standing Manhattan restaurant. Benny's Thai Cafe on Fulton Street will serve its last meal. The restaurant opened its doors back in 1996. In a message to customers posted on the front door, the owners wrote proudly of withstanding the 9-11 terror attacks. However, they said the COVID-19 pandemic proved to be too much to overcome. Dining out in the age of COVID, what is the safest way to eat outdoors at restaurants? ABC's Eva Pilgrim talked to several infectious disease experts, and their answers may surprise you. Every state in the country now allows people to eat at restaurants outside, but 41 states are now seeing increases in cases. So we asked seven infectious disease experts, what would they do? When asked, would you dine out outside in an area that's a COVID hotspot, all of them said no. In a hotspot state, everybody needs to be doing what they can to reduce the spread of the virus. That means social distancing, masks, all of the things that are really hard to do when you're eating out. We then asked, would you dine out in an area with low rates of transmissions? Two said no. You're still interacting with the uh, waitress or, or waiter, and then you're also still nearby whoever you're uh, dining with. But five said they would eat out outside with some caveats. I think we have to consider individual risk. If you are at high risk for severe disease, then you really cannot afford to acquire this infection. These experts tell us when it comes to outdoor restaurants, there are some key things they look for. Plenty of distancing, at least six feet between guests, the wait staff wearing masks, and if you're not eating, they suggest wearing your mask. One of the most important factors, who is at your table? Ideally, you would like those people to be in your bubble. The National Restaurant Association says we share the nation's concern over the rising COVID-19 cases, adding restaurants are now taking additional steps to meet social distancing guidelines, the use of face coverings as required by local, state or federal officials, as well as enhanced cleaning and sanitizing protocols and the emphasis on personal hygiene. All of our experts agree if you really want to dine out. I think all epidemiologists are a big fan of to-go food right now. Eva Pilgrim, ABC News, New York. 
Uh, the sun sets on summer streets. Coming up on Eyewitness News, the program that closes large stretches of thoroughfares takes a pause, but there are other outdoor and car-free options for New Yorkers. Find your keys. Find your get up and go. Find pants that aren't sweats. Find your friends. Find your sense of wonder. Find the world is new. Again, at Chevy, we'd like to take you there. Now, during the Chevy Open Road Sales Event, current qualified lessees can get this Traverse for around $269 a month. See local Chevy dealer. USAA is made for what's next. No matter what challenges life throws at you, we're always here to help. With fast response and great service. And it doesn't stop there. We're also here to help look ahead. That's why we're helping members catch up by spreading any missed USAA insurance payments over the next 12 months. So you can keep more cash in your pockets for when it matters most. And that's just one of the many ways we're here to help the military community. Find out more at USAA.com. With Con Edison, you have the power to go solar, to live greener, to drive cleaner. We're committed to providing more clean energy solutions, and we'll be tripling our energy efficiency programs, helping you save energy and money. Together, we have the power to keep New York moving forward. Where there's energy, there's Con Edison. The Speech Tree is a multidisciplinary therapy center. Our therapists specialize in working with children who present with a variety of difficulties. We offer speech therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy, and ABA therapy. Parents can come and get everything that they need for their child under one roof. You can just be in one space and get it all, and your child really benefits from that. I came in here feeling helpless, and I walk out of here feeling empowered. I have the speech tree. Another New York City tradition has just been put on pause because of the coronavirus. The Department of Transportation is scrapping summer streets for now. That's where major roads are closed to cars on three Saturdays in August. It cites the challenges of social distancing and notes that many roads are already closed for the Open Streets program to create more pedestrian space. Council Speaker Corey Johnson is not happy. He says summer streets are needed more than ever. I tell you what, umbrellas, air conditioning, whatever you can do are going to be needed for the next three days around here, right? In a big way. This heat wave will rival, I think, the last one that we saw. Here's a look outside right now. 81 degrees, a southwest wind coming in at about 5 miles per hour. Humidity has crept up to 72%, the high on the day getting up to 88 after a morning low of 72. So the heat wave in Central Park didn't begin today because we didn't get up to 90, but at a place like LaGuardia Airport, also at Newark, you did get up to the 90 degree mark. And the excessive heat will continue to build as we head into the day tomorrow. I think Monday will be the peak of it, feeling like 100 degrees or higher for most of the area during the day on Monday. Tuesday, another day in the 90s, feeling like 100. Watch for some afternoon storms. Those could be on the heavy side, but they'll be followed by some relief from the humidity for the middle to latter part of next week. 80 right now in Newark, 81 at Titoboro, as is typically the case in summer. Urban areas really retaining that heat overnight in the lower 80s. Meanwhile, suburban areas cooling off nicely down to 71 at Sussex and also Monticello. Upper 70s on the island, mid 70s down the Jersey Shore. Dew points are right up around the 70 degree mark, which is oppressive, and the humidity will remain elevated, even go up a little bit, especially Monday into Tuesday. Lows tonight in the meantime going down to about 74 if we're lucky in the city, and look at that for a high tomorrow. 94 degrees, and much of the region getting well into the 90s, and of course the temperature doesn't tell the whole story. When you add in the humidity tomorrow, that heat index is not too much higher than the actual temperature value. Maybe south of the city, it's more humid, so you can get up closer to 100 for the heat index. But everywhere during the day on Monday, getting up to 100 plus for a feels-like temperature, in some areas could even eclipse the 105-degree mark. Humid with patchy clouds overnight. Tonight, we're down to 74. It's a mix of sun and clouds for tomorrow, becoming hot, humid. 94 feeling like close to 100, especially south of New York City, clear to partly cloudy, remaining humid tomorrow night. We're down to about 76. Here's your AccuWeather 7-day forecast. Monday, 96, within 2 degrees of a record, by the way, for the date. A heavy afternoon storm on Tuesday after getting up to 93 and then turning drier, less humid Thursday, Friday. 
looking nice out there for the latter part of the week. Amy Freeze with an update in the morning. Sandra, we'll send it back over to you. Thank you very much, Jeff. And thank you all for staying up with us tonight. I'm Sandra Bookman. Eyewitness News returns tomorrow morning at 6. Rest in peace, Regis. Stop and Shop has all you need for your cookouts. Like